Hello, this is Brian Stevens with Legacy Venture Group, and our website is BuyBizUSA. And I'm trying to share an overview of how to go about looking at pricing your business when you're going to sell your business somewhere down the road. And it's usually very useful, even if your plans are way so far down the road that you're not even sure when to get a valuation of your business early on. Be careful what you get for free on the internet, but it's worth getting a good indication. It's sort of like trying to plan a trip. I want to go to wherever favorite country in the world you want, and then when they ask you where are you leaving from, you just shrug your shoulders because you don't know. Forget all the garbage you hear in the marketplace. Get the facts. But I'm going to give you a high-level view of how you should look at your business. There are a lot of different ways that people approach valuation for almost anything. Residential houses as well use this approach and probably a lot of different valuing, different jewelry, etc. There's a lot of different things, but it follows three major approaches. The asset approach, which is usually looking at what the assets of physical things are worth and adding them up. Quite often it's used for businesses that are really going out of business, but not the only way. Income, looking forward into the future of how much a business is going to generate and bring it back to some sort of return on investment and different factors. But the most common way is what we call the market approach, which is looking at the marketplace and looking at what other similar businesses like yours have sold for and trying to determine a factor. A couple of the multiples that people look at are what the business did in gross revenues, or a thing called EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. But SDE is that owner benefit of one full-time working owner in the business. Now, there's a complex formula. It's not overly complex. We know that our financials on the tax returns don't show at the bottom line the real story of how much we earn. So we make some adjustments to those financials called normalizing it and add back things like non-recurring expenses. Hey, I just spent $350,000 on remodeling my my building or my property and my my dental practice, and I haven't had to spend that for the last 25 years, but I wanted to look good as I'm approaching the sale. So adding that back would be legitimate. If you have things like PPP money, you really can't count that as income because it's not a repeatable type of income coming through. So you go through looking at the different factors. You can look at this, and you can even ask me for a list of, of the type of things that are there. Items like depreciation and amortization are non-cash events, so they minimize our taxes, but they don't really cost anything. And then we look at what the formula is going to be. We determine how much the business really owned, earned for one particular owner, and then we apply a relevant multiple, and we go to find that multiple looking at the marketplace. What did other businesses that are pretty similar to yours, remember no two businesses are exactly alike, and always using the average is not the right answer. Sometimes you're gonna use higher or lower than the average and think through the process, but I'm just trying to give you a high level view of what that formulation for the valuation would be. Now keep in mind that when they're looking at these formulations and determining a valuation, when they're looking at the multiples of gross revenues, They're pulling that from businesses that have sold that are like yours in the past. And all these businesses have all these things in place, you know, trademarks and patents and furniture and fixtures and equipment. So you're not adding those extra to the income. They're part of what goes on. Now, if you had something that wasn't tied to the business, but you're going to say, I'm going to throw in this trailer that I used to use years ago to educate kids at the schools, but it's sitting there. I haven't used it for my dental practice. And you can have that too. You might say, okay, that's another 10000 or some odd dollars, whatever that would be. But you're getting into the point of trying to share everything you can with the business. When you're looking at those comparables, you try to pull businesses that are very similar to yours in terms of size and certainly the specific industry. And sometimes it's even useful to go to regions if it really matters. And we look at, hey, what did other businesses sell for? In this database, we pulled this together for a client that had a smaller practice, about $550,000 practice. And so we found these comparables are very similar. 26, we like to see at least 20, but yet not a whole lot because it gets crazy. And we started looking at whether the average multiple of earnings, here's that multiple of SDE, and showing that these sold for about two times an owner working average. But you can justify that whatever makes sense here, they sold between 1.28 and 2.40. And of course, if you're using other different factors like revenues or EBITDA, you'd find the right relevant income. Then we begin to take a look at the business itself and doing what we just talked about, adding back the different things. So here we've added back, we've taken a business making 2 million and 
we've taken out the cost of goods sold and the expenses all together and added back things like amortization, depreciation, some contributions for the churches or their charity of their choice, the meals to the spouse that they would eat in the restaurants, a one-time remodel that I mentioned before, even what they're paying themselves. And now instead of 200000 this business is really showing us that it's really made about 479000 And when you apply those different multiples, you get the number you want to be. Okay, I'm trying to keep this short, so thank you for listening. Hopefully this gives you a stimulation of an idea. Get a professional at all times to help you through the process, whether it's valuing the business or going through your tax returns or entering into the process of selling your business. This is Brian Stevens with the Legacy Venture Group, and thank you for listening. If I can be of any help, you can reach out to us at 833-B-U-Y-B-I-Z-U-S-A, or rather 833-289-2491. And you can also email us at biz, B-I-Z, at buybizusa.com. All right, that's our website as well. Take care, thank you, and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.